Welcome back to another tutorial and today we're going to animate a full web landing page in After Effects. This is the entire flow, you start by scrolling down a few points and we can end up in a section where the image on the left sticks in place and the content on the right is the one that is moving. So this is the entire flow we're going to animate, so let's get right into it. So if you've seen some of my previous tutorials, I start off by going into design and laying out the entire flow and identifying what assets I need to export in order to achieve the animation I'm after. So let me select all the assets here that we want to have and uh, we can drag it into After Effects. Everything is saved and we can now go into After Effects and start building out this flow in a composition. I'm organizing some files here in some folders and also I'm going to start off by right click on the reference image and make a new composition out of this. We can name this main and this is where we're going to then drag and drop all the assets here and place them on the right position. So a little tedious here, but as I said before, you can use plugins to do this. But before I recorded this, I actually tried out the AEUX plugin that you can use from Sketch, Figma or anything into After Effects. But it is very robotic. They export stuff in ways that you don't want them to. For example, icons are broken out in different shapes and uh, it just doesn't helpful in the end. Just go through the design file, making sure that everything looks uh, as I wanted. And then I have full control of how the assets turn out. The page is now assembled and we are ready to animate. Let's go into the top bar and the cover in the top. I'm gonna add in some opacity keyframes here to make it fade in from zero to 100. And then I also wanted to scale from the top corner into the center. So I'm adding keyframes for that as well. But before that, I'm selecting these keyframes and going into my Motion 2 plugin to add in some easings. I want it to be a little snappy in the beginning, but then smooth in the end. Then I move over to the first keyframes here and adjusting the scale percentage of the photo and then also the opacity to zero. Moving up in top bar, do the same here. And let's play and see how this looks like. That's pretty nice. And I'm just gonna delay the top bar here a little bit to fade in afterwards so we can get the focus on the imagery and elements. And then we move over to the contents. So we're gonna select the title, paragraph and CTA, add in position keyframes in the same duration as the cover and then also opacity. So we want this to move from the bottom and upwards and also fade in from 0 to 100%. Selecting these keyframes and adjusting the easings a little bit and make it more rapid in the beginning. And let's see how that looks like. That looks pretty good, but I'm just going to adjust the opacity here to last a little longer and also align it to the edge keyframes. There we have it. And as you can see, all these content pieces is now moving in at the same time. So let's then select each of these and delay them by 10 frames to the right. That way we will have a nice progressive animation here instead. There we go, there we have it, more fluid. So now let's go up into composition, new composition and add a new one, which is the actual screen size. So in this case, 1440 times 1024. And this is what we're going to use to house this whole animation and do the actual scroll in. So we have one large composition for the entire flow, and then we have a screen composition for the actual preview. So I'm adding in position keyframes in this composition, adding in some easings, and that is pretty much it. And now I can then see when we should time this vision piece to fade in. So I'm going back to the main composition, adding in keyframes here for the opacity on that one. Then we can move over to the next part and I'm using around a second here to give a good pause in between each of the moments. So as you saw there, I added in a number on the composition itself as a marker. So you can add these by holding in shift and any number. Very useful for matching compositions. So here I went back to the other composition, just added in another position keyframing here for the next scroll and added in the same easings as we had before. 
Now we continue to the main part of this tutorial and that is the fixed scrolling section. So I'm going to go down and parent all the content pieces that we have around us up and down and drag that to our text content one, two, three. And by doing this, they will then follow whatever position we have on this particular layer. And as you saw, I left out the photos because we want them to stay at place. Then we're just going up here in the view settings to add in some rulers because I want to align them properly when I move them. So in this case, I'm just adding keyframes here on this particular layer and moving them up and down to see where the next will land on. Then I move forward a second and then do the same thing for the second scroll. And then we can see the content coming in the bottom. We can already see how this feels like. And then we can add in some easings again that we use and then see how that looks like as a first preview. So that looks pretty nice, but we can definitely add in some more dynamic here in the photos. So let's go in the left side and right click on one of the photos, doesn't matter which one, make a new composition of this one and we can name it photos. So let's house all the photos in one here and try to make some parallax movement as well in here. So I'm gonna drag in all the photos in this uh, view. I'm gonna place them uh, one center and one above and one below, as you can see here. And I want these to move in the same direction as the scrolling since they are related to the coming and the previous uh, content. But I want this to be in a parallax way. I, want, I don't want it to follow it exactly because then we lose that sticky feeling. But since they are masked here in this composition, it will still be a nice effect here. Now go back to the main composition and clicking on the photos composition, hold on option and then drop it on one of the photos here to replace that one and then I delete the old photos. And now we're gonna then match the scrolling behavior from the previous one to this photo one. So I'm adding in a null object and parenting all these photos to this one. I'm adding in position keyframes on the same duration as before. And then I'm basically moving these individually how I want it to appear. So then I go back to the main composition again and we can now play this back and see how it feels like. Still loading here a little bit, but we can still see that parallax effect that we were after. And then we can move on to the last step and that is the carousel in the bottom. So we're gonna add in the last scroll downwards. We're gonna end up on this carousel, which is all about escaping the concrete jungle and browsing some cabins that you can rent out in the woods. So I'm adding in position keyframes here as well, going back to the stays layer and then simply add in position keyframes to move this one from left to right. Then we're just going to match this up to aligning to the left part and the scroll indicator in the bottom is also going to move. So it's going to be like a snappy position here. So the next element is the line in the bottom and I'm going to go in and add a position keyframe in the beginning and end and basically move this from left to right to the center and then add in the same easings. That's super straightforward but a really nice look and a good function. We're done with animation and uh, thanks so much for watching this far and if you want to stick around and now I'm going to show you just a small, small detail here when it comes to a presentation and that is the gestures. So I'm going to add in these here as elements and you can actually find this and much more resources and behind the scenes content in the link in the description. So be sure to check that out if you want to use it yourself. So I'm adding in the first one here. It's a vertical swipe. Just adding it in and in general, I time this with 10 frames before the actual scroll behavior is happening. So in this case, it's going in the wrong direction. So I'm just gonna right click and transform it to flip vertically. Then I'll shrink it down to 80% or something to match the size here. And there we have it, basically. It's very straightforward. I'm just gonna move it here to the left to get some better contrast from the background. And then I just keep duplicating this layer and add it to the next scroll. And then you're tweaking it to get some better contrast in the bottom and then we are down in the bottom and this is the carousel and the scroll here is now vertical but horizontal. We're just going to keep the same element, we're going to go into rotation and add in 90 degrees here to flip it in the right direction. 
and I believe this is also in the wrong direction, so we can right click again and flip it vertically. So here we have the final animation and I hope you like this video and tutorial to follow along and create your very own landing page animations. Let me know in the comments what you think about this one, would love to hear your thoughts. And as always, check the description for more content and you can also follow me on Instagram and any social at Belgroff. Be sure to like this video as well if you enjoyed it to help me out here on YouTube. And as always, subscribe for more if you haven't already and I'll see you very soon again.